Well, hey everybody, I'm Jan Erickson and this is As Above, So Below, a rune and tarot divination for Thursday, the third day of October, 2024. Well, we're in my birthday month. Ten more days. I love October. I happen to think it's the best month of the year, but that's just me. Let's go ahead and take a rune from the Elder Futhark bag here if it will ever drop through my fingers and <laughs> end up with one in my hand. There we go. We have Yura. Yura is uh, the 12th rune of the Elder Futhark. It uh, essentially means year. It's a really good um, um, harvest rune or, or uh, meaning fertility, um, means cycles. It's, it's good for gardening. Um, but it also represents uh, transformation and balance. Uh, a certain level of give and take when you see Kenaz in both directions there. Kenaz, uh, which is the sixth rune of the Elder Futh Arc, is the torch or the or, or illumination or awakening or the light of spirit, essentially. And so here you're expressing it outward and drawing it inward um, in, in this sort of, I mean, it's, it's another one of the as above, so below runes within the Elder Futh Arc um, that has that type of ab above and below energy. Uh, that that it resonates with, um, but it's about energy, energetic alignment and unfolding awareness. So either something, and I generally go for the, the unfolding awareness aspect of things um, when I look at Yura. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's as if you're drawing in something else that you didn't think of before um, that just comes out of the blue and then you're able to express that outward um, in in what in your terms of your perceptions and and uh, uh, your opinions and your ideas uh, so there could be something that new today that comes in and and sort of shakes things up uh, where you're not you just never thought about it that way before about whatever it is and so let's take a look at uh, the uh, geomancy rune here we'll throw down the four elementals and see what we come up with you know it could be something that has been progressing and then finally you're coming to a conclusion about it maybe as well um, something just but the idea of of awareness that unfolds over time uh, seems to be when, when i look at yura that that seems to be how it usually plays out for me uh, with the runes. Um, here we have, well, let me make sure here. Yeah, we have Rubius. Now, Rubius coupled with Yura, um, that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, Rubius is, a, is considered a, an evil uh, or very negative, uh, very self-directed type of... Uh, uh, energy here with Rubius. Um, Rubius is uh, the idea of a misuse of force, but extreme. Uh, someone who uh, enters your life where, uh, uh, and, and coupled with Yura, it, it's coming to that awareness that that's what's really going on. And so there could be some things going on in, in your life right now. Um, you know, either well, we'll just leave it at so we'll just leave it at that. There's some things going on in your life right now, uh, rather than trying to define it any further, where there's some kind of manipulative influence going on, and you need to be very aware of that. and And it's almost as if you weren't aware all this time, and now all of a sudden it's just sort of there, and you know it, and and you realize, and it's it's this one of those transforming moments where of realization, you know, where you're, you're, um, uh, understanding something that you didn't understand before. Uh, and so there's an awakening, there's a level of awakening to that truth, that truth of what's really happening, uh, of the manipulation or the conning or, or, uh, some kind of misuse of force, uh, maybe a misuse of trust, you know, cause trust is a very strong force. And so let's just set this aside though, and take a look at the, 
the uh, cards and see what they have to say and give us a few more details on that. I'll just shuffle a little bit more here and then we'll cut the deck and take the lower half. Well, um, like we had on Monday, we've got two cards from the Major Arcana here. Um, the Fool and the Lovers, and then we also have the Seven of Cups. Uh, we have the Ten of Pentacles and the and Death and the Magician on Monday. A um, little bit different uh, runes, so we had Vunio and Vaya, you know, so we had a, a new path filled with joy and happiness and all of that. So... Um, that uh, a little bit different this time with the uh, unfolding awareness and and a misuse of force or manipulation or some kind of control that's that's external here. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, do the um, overall numerology here real quick. So we had twelve for Yura, and uh, we have zero for the Fool, so nothing there. Uh, seven. For the seven of cups and six for the lovers that's 25 or seven so i'll put that down there so i don't forget um seven is about balance and about letting things settle out and observing what you've got uh it's also about magic and and um, uh, spirituality and and it could be legal issues uh so you know if this was a legal situation for example um, that you're coming to an awareness about, uh, then you realize there was a misuse of force uh, going on, a misuse of position, uh, uh, the ability to lie to people or con people into believing one thing or another that, that whoever it is needs you to believe. And now you've come into that awareness that that's happening. Uh, and, and part of that unfolding awareness, I think, with the seven uh, related to that is letting things settle out observing and watching and seeing what happens, uh, looking for the truth of the matter, uh, and watching that settle out so that you understand the whole picture. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> from there, <coughs> uh, we reach a different balance maybe about things, uh, a more balanced perspective maybe. But let's start with a fool. Here you have card zero of the Major Arcana. You see the Fool represents the soul, and we don't yet know its gender, ready to take its leap into form. We see the little dog by its side. Uh, you see the little, uh, uh, it's either a rose or a lily. <laughs> so, so some days it strikes me as a white rose, and sometimes it strikes me as a white lily, but I think it's a rose, uh, given its leaves uh, in his hand. So there's a, an element of purity there. There's intention when you see the red here on his uh on, a, on his clothing there, on his, I keep calling him him, uh, but it's clothing. You see the, uh, uh, it looks like a knapsack, but when you get to look at it a little closer, it's more like a little purse or satchel. And generally how that's interpreted is you've got uh, 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 everything that he, the soul has learned that it wants to bring into this reality. Uh, with them contained in this uh, little satchel, if you will, that's that's uh, attached to a a stick that's that's put over his shoulder. Its shoulder. I keep wanting to say his. Um, it looks like a he to me. Uh, you see the uh, the little symbols on his clothing here uh, is the wheel uh, as it turns uh, and the wheel of life uh, and. Uh, uh, you see the sun beating down; it's illuminating the whole sky. So this would be this would be the the quantum field or the soul's field, uh, the astral realm there. And then he's going to take that leap of faith into form and trust the process that all that all that the soul is supposed to learn is going to happen for him. Uh, and, and again, he's got his awarenesses; its awarenesses. Uh, uh, here in the in the little satchel to help help the the process along the way, um, but he he's but but the but the 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 soul is looking toward heaven, if you will, looking toward the collective consciousness, uh, trusting the process as as uh, uh, as it's ready to take that leap into form. But 
you can say with the fool it's undeveloped potential. Um, it can also be about new ideas and trust and innocence and no expectations. But the issue with that may be, on the downside of that, there could be potential for anything else. And I think Rubius is bringing in that idea that there could be something that's a little more... Uh, uh, there's, there's more caution here that you need to have. You need to step back and look at it and see just exactly what this influence is, who it is, and what's the real truth of the matter. And and again, you know, with the idea of a misuse of force, you know, the, the individual is up to no good, basically, and trying to convince you that, that something is true that just, that just isn't. Uh, and with the seven of, of, of cups here, uh, we see the individual in silhouette there. So this is the dream state. You see all these cups that are sitting there on, on uh, uh, the, the, grayish, the grayish clouds here, the dark gray clouds, grayish brown clouds. It depends on the lighting of how it looks, but it's kind of a grayish brown. Um, you see different uh, uh, things in the uh, uh, cups. You see a person's head. You see a serpent. You see um, a priest that has some kind of veil over over its over its eyes here, over its head and eyes. Uh, you see a castle on a on a hilltop there, or on a on a peak of some kind. Um, you see jewels. You see a wreath for victory, and you see. I don't know if this is a griffon or, or what kind of a, of a creature this is here, a serpent-like creature though. Um, and, and basically, I look at this card in one of two ways. Now, a lot of tarot readers will see this card as having your head, head in the clouds and not being very realistic. realistic. Um, so that, and that may be a plot that may apply actually to this uh, particular reading. Um, I tend to like to see it as dreaming new dreams because you know, if you don't imagine the future, then what do you want? What do you go to? You know, it, there could be things that are completely unrealistic that you might want to do or accomplish. But then there might be that one that you might think, oh, you know, that's never going to happen. And then suddenly a door opens and there it is. Right. And you have that opportunity. And since you've been thinking about it, it's not like it's completely new because your imagination has taken you there already. And so. I, I I like to be a little more forgiving uh, about this, but if this also represents the Rubius influence, it could be somebody, especially in the silhouette, you can't make out the person, you don't really know who it is. Again, you know, if, if you have Yura and there's some unfolding awareness about what's really going on, about someone who's being deceptive or or, or misusing their position with you and, and mis, misusing the trust you have in them. Uh, it could be these are the promises that are being being made uh, to you that are never going to be kept. Uh, so it could be something like that. And again, with the seven numerology for the reading, the seven numerology for this card, you want to let all that settle out so that you understand the whole picture. What's the truth here? What's really going on? And especially with the idea of the unfolding awareness aspect of this, where maybe you didn't realize in the beginning, but as things go on, you see, suddenly you start to realize, you know, something's amiss here. Something isn't right. You know, all the promises made were never kept. And all of the things we were, we were told would happen, or I was told would happen, you know, not happening at all. And so now you start to see this person in a way where they're a whole lot more clear than you see them here. Because here, the individual's back is to the reader. Um, you don't see who it is. It's all in shadow, essentially. And and the idea that, that uh, uh, your head is in the clouds with this person. And this person is the one that's actually taken you there. Not, not that you've would necessarily have been this way, but there was something about this person. And again, I think this person, at least for today, in the Seven of Cups, represents whatever person Rubius does in the reading, where there's somebody who's deceiving, that's making promises, you know, big promises of this and that, and, and never following through, and, and it ended up being all about that person instead of, you know, you or, or those around you or what have you. And so at some point, though, 
we have another card from the Major Arcana here. And again, Major Arcana cards are soul archetype cards. And so they're, they're uh, uh, something that, that it, it's higher self coming in and saying, look, these are the things you need to learn, uh, part of the lessons you need to learn as a soul here. Um, so there's something overall. It's not the details of things. It's the overall principles that you're to learn. And here you see the angel sitting above on a cloud. Uh, another cloud like with here. Um, you see the sun uh, representing uh, uh, the creator uh, up above. You see uh, the man and the woman there representing Adam and Eve. You've got Eve in front of the apple tree with the serpent behind her. You've got uh, uh, Adam with the uh, uh, the sketchy newly growing oak tree. So not a lot of strength there. One thing I find interesting about this card um, you see the mountain peak between them, and it seems to lean a little bit toward uh, Eve. If, if I, I just tend to call these Adam and Eve, uh, g given the especially because of the tree behind her. Um, but you have also she is she's focused on spirit. She's looking at the angel. She's looking toward heaven, uh, and he's looking at her. So. Where is the true strength here? And, and I know sometimes it, it doesn't actually. <laughs> Eve is, is uh, the woman is always viewed as the one who's less than, right? Uh, but no, it's not the case. Uh, when you look at the uh, uh, tarot, you're looking at uh, uh, first the empress. Uh, you, you've got, to, which is card three, and then card four is uh, the emperor. So the emperor is her consort. She gives birth to creation before the emperor ever, ever comes into play. And so so it's like the, the adage of the, of the great mother uh, breathing out the universe, and we rest in the great mother's breath until she decides to bring us back in. Uh, and to inhale, to inhale creation back in and start all over again, uh, and and so it, there's a there's a, a a misuse of force there, a rubious energy there in the form of patriarchy, where you know the the Adam, the, where the man is the most important. Well, in fact, that's that's not necessarily the case, right? That they, they should be living in balance with one another. Uh, the problem is, is that the strength that bends toward her. Uh, the strength of the mountain uh, bends toward her, so she has the true, the true, the true strength. And who and she was the one that was given the tree of knowledge, which doesn't doesn't mean that she doesn't see her creator because she does. Because who do you think gave it to her? You know, the creator gave her that strength, that knowledge. And so when you look at the, it sort of gives a new idea here to the uh, apple tree and the serpent that's that's telling her what she needs to know to keep creation safe essentially and in balance with one another so here you're looking with the lovers with balance and duality uh, discrimination uh, integration unification uh, another idea is self in others uh, instead of seeing the instead of seeing the other in the in 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 the in the creation here that we have on earth instead of seeing the other all of the time instead you see the self in others you know or the other side of self that's another way of saying it it's all our creation here you know if you look at at all, everything that when the soul takes its leap into form with the fool you know the soul is creating its experience essentially and so if that's the case then it's populating it with everything else right and that means that everything you see is the other side of self and learning that balance you know, brings in all kinds of things. It brings in no judgment. It brings in compassion. Uh, it brings in uh, unity uh, of, of the experience, the whole idea of bringing the collective consciousness and manifesting it into form. It brings in all of that higher self sort of uh, uh, stuff into, into your experience here that you're having. And so, again, with the lovers, it represents a level of higher balance that Rubius does not provide. Uh, but but Yira, on the other hand, does, because you're seeing the truth about things. There's no illusion here anymore, and you're understanding the truth of who you are uh, in, in, <laughs> as a soul that's, that's here on this earth, that's ready to experience whatever you decided you wanted to work on, 
uh, and you're balancing that polarity within. If you want to look at the lovers that way, you can. Um, but it it's understanding that the rubious energy in the case of the lovers is just the outlier. It's the part that's it's the it's the force. It's the ego force here that's not going to integrate well with the soul. In at least in terms of 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 this particular rune. Now it's complement Albus on the other hand is is the idea of wisdom. It's the sage. It's it's drawing in higher awareness. It's and and I mean in a sense you're really looking there at those two runes really are uh, an as above so below experience with the higher uh, vibratory influence being Albus and the lower one being Rubius and these are at the extremes realistically uh, and so with Rubius and the lovers it's not there's no balance there um, there's no understanding that each helps the other to understand the greater message, the greater purpose here in the lover's card. Um, we, we see the strength of the, <clears throat> of the oak tree behind Adam, uh, but we see the tree of knowledge with, with uh, Eve. So does he have the strength to listen to her? Uh, I mean, if you're looking at, 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 you know, the upcoming election, you can see the dichotomy there. You know, do we have the inner strength to listen to the woman who is running to be president? Do we, or do we hang on to the patriarchal attitudes uh, where we can't, we can't give her her due when in fact she's more than qualified? She's, she's had all of this experience that will, that, and, and especially as vice president currently, that, ha, that will bring her into this position uh, when I believe she wins, but will bring her into a position that she's more than ready for and to value what she has to say and what she has to offer to that position. You know, with Rubius, the, that very negative energy will resort to anything to prevent that strength, that, 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 that strength from happening and manifesting to where we can say, you know what, she's the clear choice. So that would be one example of this, you know, but but as far as, as that goes, if this is something where you've come to an awareness, and, and it could be about that. I mean, that's the big thing in our lives right now over the next month is, uh, is the election. Uh, but if you, if you uh, are thinking in terms of just your own personal life where there may be something that's happening where you've, you've just decided, you know what, I was wrong about this, about what this person's doing, and now I understand what's really going on. And again, that there's a, <clears throat> a misuse of force going on, there's a, a deception going on, and now I understand it, I get it, I, I understand what's happening here. And so you have to take that strength from the lover's card to rebalance yourself and rebalance your perception so you're not giving yourself away to this negative impact influence that's just trying to basically con you into believing one thing or another that's just not true the the promises made are not promises kept in other words maybe serving that individual but not serving you or anyone else in your life so i i think this is kind of a it's kind of an interesting reading um complex in some ways not so much in others uh but we take that leap of faith we trust you know, somebody that maybe we can't trust. And, you know, you, you discover that it's all an illusion, basically. And, and in this case, instead of dreaming new dreams, I think the Seven of, of, of Cups is really talking about the illusion that, that someone in the Rubius position expects you to buy, expects you to buy into. And maybe, again, maybe this is, maybe this is countrywide or society-wide with the election. You know, you're looking at who do you believe and who do you trust and who, who can really... Uh, uh, bring us over the finish line, so to speak, in a positive way. Uh, and if that's the case, then you're dealing with, with, with someone who's honest and someone who isn't. And you have to make, and, and maybe you're coming into that awareness that, that the person you thought was honest, it really is the person that's been dishonest all this time and, and expected you to buy into lies that are just so easily, they're, they're so easily found out that that's the sad part of this. The lies that you, 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 it's so easy to find out that it's not true. It's so provably false. In other words, uh, that, that, you know, this leap of faith that you've taken with the fool, it, it, it didn't pan out. 
you know, because this person is just too good at conning, right? And so the trust that you had has to, you have to find a different balance there and take that inner strength that you gain from the lover's card to, you know, uh, uh, six is about empathy and guidance and assistance. You know, even if you're asking for higher, you know, you go, you go into meditation and ask higher awareness, what do you, what do you think, you know, what's really governing this, you know, or it could be someone else with a, a mentor or somebody with experience that you go to and say, you know, something doesn't feel right here. And they sit you down and say, listen, this is what's really going on. You need to wake up to it. Well, there's your unfolding awareness with Yura. You know, so whether you're looking at the, the angel here and heaven above as as just what that is or and in terms of higher awareness or you're looking that at that in terms of I need to I need to find a better balance. So I'm going to go talk to this person because they have more experience. They have they've always, you know, advised me well in the past. I'm going to go talk to them and get their opinion on it. It could be something like that. But in the in the in the uh, with the understanding that this is to create a different balance for yourself, how you see things in terms of your perception, what is really going on that you're looking at. And with the seven numerology overall for the reading, and again, matching the seven, uh, aligning with the seven of cups, <clears throat> being able to see what's really there and what's realistic and, <clears throat> and excuse me, what's not, you know, and, and, um, and have you kind of been believing the unrealistic side when, in, when you should have been maybe uh, had a little more discernment, essentially. Oops, my cup lid's not on. That would have been interesting, wouldn't it? Poor hot tea all over myself. Anyway. <laughs> so I think that, that, you know, whether you want to talk about this in terms of the macrocosm, which would be the election coming up, I would guess, or or something more in your personal life, you know, in a, say, in a job or, or uh, uh, with, a, with a friend or somebody that's come into your life where you've trusted them up till now and now you realize, you know what, I really can't trust this person anymore uh, because everything they say is just nonsense and I didn't realize it before. It could be something like that uh, that's happening today. You know, again, with the fool, that's about trusting the process. And maybe the process you were trusting, this rubious energy, you can't trust that energy. You can't trust that individual. Um, and uh, because, again, there is no give and take. There's only take. And, uh, uh, and that's another aspect of Yura, you know, understanding the give and take of something. Um, but again, can you be in alignment energetically with this individual? And unless you're that energy yourself, I don't know how you can. It's too incongruent. And and it could be something that's been bothering you for some time where you've been questioning, but yet not. And, you know, still trying to put your faith in this person or, or what have you. And uh, But I think at this point, it's clear that you can't. And it's clear that you need to really start paying attention if you haven't already uh, and let that unfolding awareness happen to where you understand that that there's actually a different truth to be seen here. Um, and and your perceptions need to shift and need to be rebalanced uh, so that you understand more clearly what's going on and reject out of hand this type of influence in your life, uh, because it's not going to take you anywhere. It's going to take that person somewhere, you know. Uh, you see a lot of it with uh, uh, charitable contributions. You know, they you think you're 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 giving your money to the charity. It's going to go to whatever it is, but um, uh, all too often you find out no, it was it, it it was you know the people running the charity that pocketed the money. Um, every it, when a good rule of thumb there is to uh, find out how much on a before you give to a charity, find out what how much or what percentage their administrative costs are are taken up by that money. You know, if it's, you know, in the 1% range, that's one thing. But if it's, you know, 70% goes for administrative costs, well, only 30% is going toward whatever it is you're, you're uh, uh, contributing to. Uh, and, and maybe not even that. And so you have to really take a look at things because there's a lot of scam scams out there. And that would be an example of rubious energy. So be very, very careful, uh, especially right now, because there's a lot of uh, there, there could be different with especially with the hurricane. Make sure if you're donating, make sure that it's something that's not nefarious and is something where it's that the money's actually going to go to uh, the relief efforts. 
themselves instead of somebody else pocketing the money. Like, all t I mean, in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, it seems like that's all you see now are scam charities and scam this, scam that, and they're all wanting your money. You know, everybody's got a GoFundMe page, right? It's like, well, be a little discerning there. You know, if you know that it's that it that it's actually going to go and, and your money's going to be used to take care of thus and so, that's fine. But if you don't, then that's a red flag, you know. And Rubius is the type of energy that's just all red flags. It's just that it's 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 packaged in a in a nice little package with a nice little bow on top, and it looks really good, but it's not. And it, in in fact, it's just somebody scamming money out of you. So so that would be an example of 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 you know making that realization is like okay i'm being conned here i'm being used i'm being manipulated and that's not okay and i need to see this in a more balanced perspective and uh, uh, go from the idea of getting some knowledge about it get, actually investigating you know you look at the tree tree of life the tree of knowledge here behind of uh, behind eve um, that's not a negative knowledge is power and and when you know the truth about something you see that's see that's where the mountain is bending toward it's leaning toward that and yet we're just all supposed to you know believe in the the spindly little oak tree on the other side of the equation it's like well no wait a minute i don't think i'm going to do that i'm going to do my research i'm going to do my due diligence you know i'm going to figure this out so that i understand what the truth is and so I think that that's really um, whether again whether it's whether it's having to do with the election coming up or whether it has to do with something going on in your personal life, you know, there's some truth there that needs to be revealed and and you need to see it, or there or that it is being revealed and you just haven't seen it. We'll put it that way. Uh, and now, you know, as you as you draw in that truth, you can express that outward in the decisions that you make and in, in how you see things and how you balance that whole, uh, the, the idea of perception, uh, because perception isn't necessarily truth, right? Now, if it's truth-based, you're in a better, you're in, you're in a better position, right? But if it's not, if it's all just subjective, well, you know, maybe there's something else going on and Rubius would suggest that there is. So, and don't be afraid to look at it. Don't be afraid to see the truth. Uh, it may feel uncomfortable, but if someone else is deceiving you, it's not because, it, it could be because they're really good at it, you know? And they're used to doing this all the time with people. And so they know what to say. They know how to get you to believe them. And it sounds real. It sounds, you know, true. And maybe it isn't. So again, don't just believe it. Do your due diligence and see what happens in terms of how you your awareness about all of it changes, your understanding of it changes, and uh, and then behave accordingly. You know, if someone is really doing that, walk away from them. You know, it's not worth it. It's not worth the heartache later on when you realize I was conned because that doesn't feel good either. But again, you know, it's somebody else doing that to you, you know, so don't beat yourself up about it at all. You know, there's a lot of really, really good con artists out there these days, and that's just how they live their lives. They don't care. As long as they come out on top as the winner, you know, they don't care. And, you know, if it's, and again, like if it's with a charity, they're just pocketing the money living it living on, on off the money that they that they've conned out of people you know and uh and that and and as as sick a feeling as that might have you have you feel you know when you realize it at the same time once you realize then act accordingly make your decisions uh based on that realization um because it doesn't it doesn't uh, uh it doesn't make sense to stay in that position any longer you know, so just stand up and say, I'm out of here, you know, or whatever, however you need to do it. But uh, uh, again, it's just that feeling of, of I'm coming into a different awareness about this. Something doesn't seem right and I'm going to check it out. And that's the idea of Yura, uh, I think, manifesting today. Um, so anyhow, a little bit different uh, 
uh, sense as, as from <laughs> as compared to Monday's reading. But um, again, I think sometimes when the truth hits you in the face, it's there and you can't ignore it any longer. You know, you can't rationalize it any longer. It's like rationalizing a friend's behavior when you realize eventually, you know what, they weren't really my friend after all. And and that's, I mean, I all too often, I think that's usually how something like this manifests, where somebody, you just feel a little betrayed by a friend. And uh, you realize that, you know, they're a little more manipulative than you thought they were. And, and because you like them so much, you made a lot of excuses for them. Well, that's what they're depending on. That's part of the con. That's part of the manipulation. And, uh, you know, maybe it's time to reevaluate that and to come into a different balance about it all and uh, not be uh, as willing to believe when maybe the truth is showing you something else. So anyhow, that's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Anyhow, have a good weekend. Um, look for the stuff to come out on the blog on, on uh, the midnight hour Sunday morning. Uh, the forecast will be out, the astrological overview, the correspondences for work and magic for the week. And I don't remember what I what I did for uh, the herbal magic thing. That That's there somewhere. I can't think of what it is. It was chamomile before. Maybe it's chickweed this time. Hmm. Yeah, that might be it. It might be chickweed. I'm not sure. I, I did this. I, I, I did it on last weekend. So so I wrote it then. And so I don't know. I don't remember what I wrote. I, I just did 40 cups of salsa. So my head is still spinning from that, uh, from the tomatoes, because I, I think that the uh, I think the tomatoes are done in the garden right now. I think that we had a little bit of frost and I don't think they're going to continue to ripen. But we'll see. There's an awful lot of them out there. And I, 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 I sort of hope they don't because the 40 cups of, of, of uh, salsa was a bit much. <laughs> so, anyway, again, thanks for watching. If you haven't yet clicked subscribe, I'd love you to do that. And uh, check out the blog again. It's, it's called Stepping Aside. The web address is imsteppingaside.com. If you forget, click on more below the video and a little window will pop up and it's right there. So anyhow. Um, thanks a lot. Have a wonderful weekend and uh, come back again on Monday for another edition of As Above, So Below. Be good to yourself. Be good to one another and blessed be.